The insurance industry has undergone a spate of consolidation lately, and Amtrust Financial has been no exception. The $4.6 billion casualty and property insurance giant recently closed several acquisitions, helping to boost its stock price. Here to talk about his company's recent earnings and acquisition strategy is Amtrust CFO Ron Papoli. Welcome, Ron. Nice to be here. So, Ron, congratulations again on yet another quarter of outsized earnings. You beat the street handily in the fourth quarter. Tell us a little bit about what was behind uh, those outsized earnings. We understand that there's been a, a trend recently towards consolidation in your industry, and then that's played a role in your earnings as well. I think as it relates specifically to our, our, our series of outperformance related to the, the consensus of the street, is it's our ability to continue to execute on a differentiated strategy within the property and casualty industry where we focus on, on niche products within much larger segments of business or lines of business. And I think our success either from an M&A strategy or from an organic growth perspective serves us well in terms of being able to differentiate ourselves from a risk-taking standpoint, from a pricing standpoint, and really continue to, to execute on a, on a very differentiated business strategy within the PNC space. So let's talk a little bit about that risk management. So analysts are loving the fact that your debt management has improved considerably over the course of 2014 and 2015, and also your diversification strategy through acquisitions. Can you tell us a little bit about what the core point acquisition and some of your other recent acquisitions have met for your diversification? From a core point acquisition perspective, it was very attractive in the sense that it gave us additional expertise in, in lines of business that we're currently writing in the United States, whether it be vehicle service contract within the, warrant, the auto warranty space, as well as garage liability, which is an adjunct cover that comes along with vehicle service contracts. So again, what we look at from an M&A perspective is an opportunity to broaden our reach broaden our expertise in underwriting and delivering the products. Uh, so CorePoint was certainly a, a very important acquisition to us, and we think it was well executed on from a, an acquisition price standpoint. And from a debt management perspective, I think that's been a hallmark of our ability to produce very, very solid ROEs relative to the industry when we have been able to successfully raise additional capital outside of common equity, where we have done that either through the use of senior debt or, or more recently we have done a string of very successful preferred stock, perpetual preferred stock offerings, and we actually just closed on one last week, or will actually close this week, of $165 million. So I think that uh, we've looked at it and how do you deliver shareholder value, and that's through a very successful and, and flexible capital structure. And how do you continue to deliver those outsized returns and, and that increased shareholder value throughout 2015 and beyond? Well, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it goes back to kind of my first response, is it's just continue to execute on that differentiated plan. Uh, don't become a generalist. Uh, don't, don't become a generalist in the sense of just moving to the market's will in terms of pricing or risk selection and, and taking what's available. Carve out niches within, within products. Make sure that you have successful distribution. You're able to differentiate your product from the industry overall and continue to execute on that strategy and, and continue to focus on organic growth when pricing and risk selection allows and then focus on M&A opportunities when you can identify these kind of smaller, below the radar transactions that are going to be immediately accretive. So investors have really applauded your, your strategy and how you've delivered upon that strategy. Your share price has been up significantly over the past year, but on a price to earnings ratio basis, you're still trading at a bit of a discount to your peers. Is there anything that investors are missing or what are they not understanding about your stock? Why is it trading? I, I think when you look at the, the price earnings aspect, I think what people really recognize, need to recognize in the investing community is, is that we are a differentiated model in the sense that uh, you know, 11 to 12 percent of our revenue on an annual basis comes from free, free generation, which I think the industry standard is kind of 2 to 3 percent. So when you look at the power that that fee revenue stream brings to the bottom line in terms of accretion to ROE, just the, the margin that we operate on it from an EBITDA perspective, it's a, it's a strong and growing source of revenue. Last year was over $400 million of, of fee revenue. So again, that is clearly a differentiator from us uh, relative to the industry. And what's next for your consolidation strategy? Are there any particular industry sectors or niches that you're looking at for the future? I would never want to li limit it to one sector or, or one specific thing. We are going to continue to have a robust M&A pipeline, and we are going to look at the transactions that have the least amount of execution and integration risk, the least amount of balance sheet exposure to us as a consolidated entity that are going to be uh, able to deliver accretive results. And I think it's uh, our ability to continue to execute that. Since I've been with the company in 2000, it's, we're approaching nearly 40 acquisitions. So we have a very extensive playbook on how to go about integrating these uh, acquisitions and, uh, and executing on them. Ron Papoli, thank you very much, sir. We look forward to hearing many more good things out of your company. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching The Street.